Hello, hello. Welcome to Shady and White. I'm Marilyn, and today we have a Cinnabar. Look at all this beautiful Cinnabar. This was quite a learning experience, and we, Barry and myself, are going to try to let you know what we know. That's probably the best way of saying it. Do we know everything? No, but we do know a little bit, and we'd like to share that with you. So if you haven't been here before, like I said, my name is Marilyn, my husband's name is Barry, and we're part-time resellers. We sell on eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, and YouTube. I will be giving you a price on these today at the end, but first we're gonna tell what we know about Cinnabar. So, if you have any questions, definitely send us an email at one shadyny at gmail.com. If you do purchase something, it's $5 for shipping, um, under a pound in the United States, anything over a pound or based outside of the United States, as based on where you're located and how much it weighs. So diving into Cinnabar, um, Barry is here with me. He's going to be doing the majority of the education part of this because he's going to educate me also um, because I know this much and this much isn't enough. So Barry's gonna tell us what he has found out about it. So what do you know, Barry? Okay, so I know that um... A lot of people have uh, problems understanding exactly what the cinnabar is, get it confused with plastic. And um, actually cinnabar is a natural resin that comes from an organic uh, plant, which is in a sense a natural plastic. And um, so you could think of it as the Chinese art of carved lacquer. So the substance that comes from the plant is a lacquer and the cinnabar is a mineral that is actually shaved into a powder, added to the lacquer, and then it is um, usually uh, like a piece of wood or a piece of metal. And that's another way that you know that um, it's cinnabar is because usually it's a two part. If it's plastic, it's only gonna be one part, pure plastic. Uh, the I cinnabar, know is going to have either a piece of wood inside or a piece of metal inside. Like this one's magnetic, so we know this is metal. Yeah, so we know this is a two-part metal and cinnabar. So it's lacquer. So they take the piece of metal, and then they build it up layers. So generally, it's like 25 to 35 layers of lacquer. And then at that point, and it could be up to, um, it could actually be up to 200 layers of large items. Wow. Yeah, that they could actually. So once they build it up, then they'll start carving it. And if you look very closely at it, you know, you look with your eyes, you'll see the little tool marks where they carve it. So just remember that the cinnabar is the color. It is not what this is called. This is called lacquerware because it's actually lacquer and it comes from a plant. And the cinnabar is the color that is a mineral that makes it red. And they use the cinnabar for other things also. But you could actually have a piece that's black and they take like carbon, for instance, and they add it to the lacquer. And that's and then you have like a black uh, lacquerware. So, so you, lacquer is a sap. Exactly. It's like a resin or a sap that comes from a plant. And when this is exposed to um, oxygen, it turns into a natural plastic. Oh, so it hardens. It hardens. Okay, okay. And and when you look at the um, cinnabar or the lacquer, it's always going to be super smooth. Oh, okay. I, I got gotcha. you. So it's like smooth. It's not like, um, like what we were doing, those wood um, bracelets, and you saw the chisel marks. Exactly. Okay, so that's... If you see something like that, that's not cinnabar. Exactly. So this will be, you'll never see any seams. You'll never see any air bubbles. The only marks you'll see are the tool marks when they use to make the little motifs in it. Okay. You know, the designs and the motifs. And it could come in all, it doesn't just come in like jewelry. If you look up like lacquerware, it's all kinds of like boxes and like faces. Oh yeah, jewelry boxes, trinket boxes. Yeah. I, I see quite a bit of it at auctions and online auctions and stuff like that and much bigger um displays of it so this is you know jewelry is one thing 
Um, and that is more of what I would consider what you were saying, lacquerware. I think of the black um, jewelry boxes that have carvings. Um, like, I'm trying to think what that's called. They're called lacquerware jewelry boxes. Exactly. Yeah, and they have um, jade and um, inlaid pieces in them. Exactly, and you generally see them in like black and red. Yes. Which is the carbon and the cinnabar. Okay, okay. So the lacquer, they call it cinnabar because it's red, but it's actually called lacquerware. Okay. You know, but people just call it cinnabar. It's just became, because it's so, you know, it's just so easy. Everything red that's carved has become known as cinnabar yes. and gemstones. So as these, okay, um are like a stone carved. Do you think this possibly could be cinnabar? It's actually mercury sulfite. That's actually where they get, they extract mercury from cinnabar. Cinnabar is a mineral. You know, they extract it from the earth. It comes, it's like a stone, like almost like a gemstone. I mean, people will wear it. You'll find, if you look up, you'll find like where you could um, find pendants. Mm -hmm of because you know has gemstone properties eolin properties so people actually wear it so this one i believe is um like real cinnabar it's act that's the actual stone this is lacquer whereas that is actually a stone and that's if you see this closely i'm not sure if you're gonna see if it will see how it's kind of porous like what you would expect a stone to be or some sounds. Yeah, look on the back, you can see like the, um, it's not smooth, like lacquerware. It's Oh, there you see it. There. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see it on a camera, but it will show. See, there's the a difference. Big difference. Like, see how smooth and shiny this is, like a like lacquer. The inside. Like that. See how super shiny. Versus this porous back. You can, there, you can see, like, it's definitely porous looking on the back. So that's what a cinnabar looks like in the sulfite mineral form. Thought that would be interesting. So this is what they grind up to put in with the lacquer to make cinnabar. So, tell us more. This is great. Oh, so another important thing, um, it does contain mercury. So, you got to be careful if you're shaving it or carving it or even wearing it. Some They recommend really not to wear it while you're sleeping or if you're pregnant. Which just brings out another thing. You should never wear your jewelry to bed. And a lot of people don't realize that. One, because you sweat at night and that's not good for your jewelry and it needs to dry. Um, but also for that reason that Barry just gave us, you know, you never know what's in the, um, this, this has mercury in it. So too much long wear would be uh, detrimental. Yeah, you don't know if your skin's actually absorbing the mercury. And, you know, they even say when you're pregnant not to eat fish because fish contains mercury trace levels of yeah. mercury so the same thing on jewelry it's not um all mercury you know it's just the color has that in there yeah so there's actually very little mercury in here it's so insignificant really um but i mean if you were pregnant i would definitely wouldn't recommend wearing it mm -hmm. and i definitely wouldn't recommend wearing it while you're sleeping but your skin can absorb it but it's such a minimal amount because you got to remember like 90 Probably 95% of this, if not more, is lacquer. So it's just the powder. They take the cinnabar, so, they grind it into a powder, they mix it with the lacquer, and that's what turns it red. Okay, so, so the, this piece here started as a wood piece. Yeah, it's uh, like um, a milled piece of wood. So it's a rounded piece of wood. Just a rounded piece of wood. Yeah, and they kind of mill it. And then... Um, then they start layering the lacquer over it, layer after layer after layer, and they build it up 25, 35 times on a piece like this. Could be probably, yeah, between 25 to maybe 50 layers of lacquer. 
as you can see how deep it is. Okay, I wanted to try to show you the layers. Like this one, the bottom layer has a scratch in it right here. So you see the metal beneath it. This one, so you see that these are metal. Okay, so it's the layer has gone down to the metal. But you can see here, if you look there, you can see the layers. It's thin, slight little lines. And when you're looking closely, that's what you want to see is those thin layers. This one's hard because it's so tiny, but I did want to show you that it's metal underneath and it's just a fine line. Let me show you the other one. It's easier to see it, I think. And get to remember, these are dirty, okay? Um, they need to be cleaned and you just simply wash them with Dawn dish detergent and water. Um, but you see that that is a really good example right there. See the slight lines that are horizontal? Those are layers. And you can see it here. And it's just layer after layer after layer. And between each layer, they are dried. And you see there? You see those horizontal lines is showing us um, layers and then they carve down into them and I'm trying to see where some carb lines are right here you see how it's not exactly precise you know it's not like a laser straight that right there is giving us that this was done by hand so that is good to see um, and it has nicks and um, chips, and that just gives us older um, that you know it's it's been used. However, remember that the newer pieces are made out of resin now, and they're done by machines. So this has chips, um, but if you look at the angle, trying to get us a good view. You can see layers in there. Um, you can also see it there. See the layers in there? That's a good way of seeing it. Whereas this one, I believe is an older bead that has been painted and the reason I believe that is because, yeah, you can see the layers when you're looking through them. One, I believe this has been restrung on this red string, okay? And two, um, all these have been painted, but they do look like they originally were um, probably not this bright of a um, red. So that was just to give you close up. And also, didn't you tell me that if it was smooth and you didn't see um, marks, no. that it was molded? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it would be a mold or a press. Okay. Well, some of these, some of these could either be hand carved, or sometimes you'll see where they'll actually press something into it to get the motif or the design. Okay. Yeah, but a lot of these, if you could look at it really closely. Um, you could actually see the little tool marks yes. that yeah. somebody hand carved this, this particular piece. And anytime that you see this mark here, um, this is actually from um, China. Generally, they're still using this mark today, but if you turn it over and it says silver, okay? And that meant that it was going outside of China. If you see this mark and it is a Chinese symbol, that means it was supposed to be inside um, the uh, China. 
So that's interesting to note is when you see these, if it says silver, it was meant for export. And if it's a Chinese symbol, it was just an, supposed to stay in the country. All good information. So anything else that we need to know? If you go in, example, you go into um, a thrift store and you see this sitting there, is there anything that's going to, besides trying to see it close? And like I've said before, definitely take your loop with you everywhere and pull it out because you want to be able to see the marks. You know, you want to see, is there any um, mold lines? Um, is it hand tied? You know, can you see in there? You know, like it's a simple thing. If you turn it around and you see all those lines, none of those lines are mold marks. Those are carvings. Exactly. Okay. So what else would they look for? Yeah, so basically you got the, um, definitely the seams. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's no mold marks or seams. You'll never see any seams if it's lacquer because it's built up layer after layer. Okay. Um, you'll never see any like imprints on the inside. It'll always be nice and smooth. Okay. So you want to be sure that it's smooth. And even this one, okay, this one is based on wood, okay, because it's not magnetic. So you can see how smooth it is. Okay, whereas this one is magnetic and it's super, super heavy, but yet see, you still see that smooth mark, um, whereas you can tell that it's definitely lacquered. Yeah, exactly. So, but you will find a lot of fakes out there that are just plastic or painted to simulate cinnabar. Just that little information, I think, is very, very helpful because if you see, example, Bakelite, if you see that seam, boom, you're done. Move on. However, that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it. What that means is that you are educated and that you know that it's not a real piece of cinnabar, but more of a multi piece of what they call um, red bracelet. So you know just not to pay much for it. Yeah, yeah. So this, I mean, they started using this probably hundreds or, or almost thousands of years ago in China. I'd say it goes back almost 5,000 years ago. Um, I think I read that um, the Egyptians back in Cleopatra time actually started it. Um, so they were using it at the same time China was. So it goes back to China and Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. Egypt. Yeah, it seems like everything goes back to either China or Egypt. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, okay. But, yeah, they were they found the plant, you know, and they just, when it came out of the plant, when they extracted the lacquer from the plant and exposed to oxygen, it hardened and turned into, like, a natural plastic. So 5,000 years ago, they were making jewelry out of something like this. Well, excellent. Yeah, so it's pretty amazing. Well, Barry, I want to thank you for your expertise and helping us with this because I have to say, I now know so much more about Cinnabar. I had a, I had no idea that it was a lacquerware and the red was just a stone, stone. grinded up into it. Yeah. Yeah. So just think of the, the red color as the colorant. It's, okay. it's lacquer. So it's like a dye. Yeah. So that you could have different color. Um, they call it all kind of like cinnabar in quotes, you know, but it's not all cinnabar. It's actually lacquerware, but they call it cinnabar because it's just so rev prevalent out there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hopefully we all understand it. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and by the fun. way, everybody, this is Barry, the research guru. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Hopefully that was clear and concise and hopefully everyone understands it. Oh yeah. If you have any questions for either one of us just leave it in the comments as usual okay hopefully that was helpful and you got something out of it i know we were kind of repeating ourselves a little bit but i think just getting the facts in just also to let you know that is our research that is what we learned from researching cinnabar is it everything no is it helpful it is to me and as I go out searching for jewelry, 
Um, it's very helpful for me to always, of course, as I said, take my loop and um, I never leave home without it. It's like my credit card. <laughs> I have one in every purse and even in my car. So um, I think this is one of the best uh, tools that you can use on any type of jewelry that you're out there searching for. So I'm gonna give you some prices really quick, and give you a little bit of information uh, about these pieces. Um, as I said to you about this one, it is marked on the back silver and um, it's a export out of China. The um, tool marks, um, you can see that this is real um, a cinnabar from the 1930s. Um, beautiful pieces. These are just gorgeous. I have not cleaned any of this. As I have said many a times, I do not clean jewelry unless um, I'm trying to see something underneath. Um, these um, silk strings and the cinnabar pieces um, just need to be cleaned. Um, this piece um, is, let me give you a, let me move all this over to the side. Give you a measurement. It is 24 inches and I believe it has 35 beads. Four, six, eight. 35 beads. Um, so with this one, um, researching online, I found um, very, very similar ones from 70 to $300. And those were sold prices. So I'm going to ask $75 for this one today. Gorgeous piece, um, just stunning. This one, I believe, was restrung. I also believe that these are nephrite jade. Um, and they're not knotted in between. And as I said, I believe they are cinnabar. However, I do believe that they have been painted, which was quite a normal practice. Um, for because as you can see this red isn't as red as this and some people in the 70s 60s and 70s when I think this was restrung uh, believed that the cinnabar needed to be even redder so with this one I'm going to do $30 it is it is um, 23 inches and it has 25 beads uh, of the cinnabar. Um, and like I said, I believe um, that that is that case. They are older, they look like it. Um, they definitely have the marks that give it that authentic look. This one, is I believe from the 60s, has a barrel clasp. It has molded rose beads. Um, it is a wire underneath. It has the um, uh, macrame um, tied um, knots and um, and a tassel, there's two tassels here, and that needs to be trimmed up. However, this is the piece that is authentic cinnabar, and um, this is a long piece. It is 26 inches, and then the cinnabar itself is one and a quarter, and from the rose bead down to the tassel it is six and a half inches so for this one i'm going to say thirty dollars this one is a beautiful absolutely gorgeous um 
I already showed you the marks and everything. It is two and five eighths of an inch, and it is uh, five eighths wide. And as far as deep, it is a quarter, a little over a quarter of an inch, but beautiful markings on this. Just stunning. On this one, I'm going to say $30. Lovely. This one is the one that was metal, extremely heavy. Um, in a few places, as I showed you, the um, deepest level has um, a few marks all the way down to the metal. And this piece is two and a half inches and it is a quarter inch, but the motif on this one is just a gorgeous. I love this one. And this one I'm gonna do $25 on, beautiful. And these are gorgeous. These are sterling silver um, backs, and these are the ones that I said were stone. They are porous and they have been hand carved. Aren't those just unbelievably beautiful? And they are dirty. If Once these are cleaned up, they are going to be shockingly beautiful. But they are marked on the back with an infinity sign and 925. And I did test these and they are both, of course, sterling. Um, and they are just beautiful. It is... A half inch by I'm gonna say three eighths of an inch deep just the um, stone part are those gorgeous so I'm gonna say $30 on the stone roses beautiful so there you go what did you think hopefully you found this helpful and enlightening and hopefully not too long-winded hopefully you learned something I know I personally did I have to say that I have for years shied away from Cinnabar just because I thought it was so confusing. Hopefully this was a little cut and dry, maybe a little basic, but for me it was helpful and I will be able to go to auctions and thrift stores and um, estate sales by just taking my little loop and being able to take a look and hopefully gain something that I'm an educated purchaser and hopefully you are also. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, be sure to comment below and let us know what you thought. Um, be sure that if you saw something, send us an email at one shadyandy at gmail.com if you are interested in anything and we will send you a PayPal invoice. Give us a thumbs up know we appreciate you spending a little bit of your time with us. Subscribe below and we will see you on the next one. Bye!